The most awkward negative or plain crazy response you've gotten after performing a good deed, part one. Please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account one. In the, the summer of 2003, I threw a big party at my parents' house. They were on a cruise, but knew about it. And I rented a roulette table. Party was great. Good time was had by all. And the next day, I had to put the table in my truck and return it. I get to the highway exit, which was a very steep and long curve. And as I get halfway up, I see a broken down Buick with an older woman at the wheel still in the exit. I pull over and want to get this car off the road because it's only a matter of time before someone plows into her. I approached the woman, told her my concerns, and offered to push the car while she steered to get it off the ramp. I'm a big guy, 6 toma 5 and 280 at that time. But I was having a near impossible time getting this Buick uphill. Shocking, right? Thankfully, a Samaritan pulls over and without a word helps me the rest of the way. Super guy. So now that the vehicle was out of danger, I offered the lady a ride to a Holiday Inn that was just off the exit. I said you can call for help and at least sit in a comfortable air-conditioned lobby while you wait for help. She agrees. Along the short way, she asks me if I'm religious. I replied that I'm Jewish, but not extremely religious. It's more of a cultural thing. She says, well, I want to give you something and reaches into her purse. Oh, no, she's going to try to give me money. How do I refuse this? I think that's when the religious pamphlets start coming out, including a copy of The Watchtower. Thankfully, I managed to pull up to the hotel at that point. I told her that I was comfortable with my beliefs as they were, told her to have a nice day, and drove off to return the roulette table. I wonder if she tells stories of the nice heathen Jew with a gambling problem in church, TLDR, helped an older woman with car troubles, and she tried to convert me. Account 2. I was driving home from university one day, and I stopped for a red light. I looked around and caught eyes with an older gentleman in the car next to me, and we both snapped our glances forward as if we had caught each other looking at dicks in the men's bathroom. I sheepishly looked back to the guy, and we caught eyes a second time. I waved. He laughed and waved back. Awesome. Why don't I do this more often? I spent a week waving at people randomly and being super friendly. It was 11 in the evening, and I was walking back to my car in a friend's apartment complex. An older man walked by, and I took a brief moment to greet him. Good evening, sir, and he responded. Oh, God, please don't hurt me. I was so taken aback by his response that all I could do was stare. He cried, I have a family, they need me, please, please, just let me go home. I told him to have a nice night, and I never talked to strangers ever again. Account 3. I found a women's purse on the road while walking back to a shuttle from an all-day concert. It was close to midnight, and there was 50,000 people walking two kilometers from the site to where the buses, shuttles, parking lots were, etc. In the shuttle, I looked through the purse. There was lots of cash, credit cards, expensive sunglasses, etc. I pulled out her cell phone and called the numbers that made sense. Home, mom, dad, most recently called, etc. This was before texting was really huge, and she hadn't sent a text in two weeks, had no luck, so we went to bed and decided to try again in the morning. Her address was from another province, so I knew finding her before she left, and before we went back to our home province as well, was important. Nay. Of her friends finally answered and said she was staying with another friend. She gave me a number of someone else who knew someone who knew that girl's number. I finally got the number to the house where she was staying and called it. I asked for the girl, and she said, Oh, cool. So can you bring it here? He house was out of our way, not on the way home at all. I offered to meet back at the concert site or a restaurant or gas station along the way. She sighed and said, My friends are still sleeping, so how do you expect me to get there? Decided we could go slightly out of our way and go to a restaurant near her for brunch. She ended up waking her friend who drove her there anyways. She comes in, walks up to me and just puts her hand out. I give her the purse. Did you steal anything? I know exactly what was in here, so I'll know if you stole anything. No, everything is as I found it. But it might have been picked up by someone else before me. She searches through everything before she's satisfied I didn't rip her off. I am now expecting at least a thank you. This is what I get. 
A bunch of my friends and family said you called them in the middle of the night. And this morning? Why did you do that? And you were using my phone for long distance, and I don't have a package, so you cost me money. I was dumbfounded. All I could muster was, I had no idea how else to find you. Would you rather I had just left it in the street? I don't know. It's just been annoying. She turns around and leaves. TLDR. Returned a girl's purse and she was a total bitch about it. Account 4. While working at the Geek Squad, I was at an inn, home job. Upon entering the customer's home, they obviously didn't have much, and I immediately felt bad that they contact the Geek Squad, cause they're super overpriced, they only wanted a hardware install, which was a super stupid reason for it anyway. Upon powering up their computer, I noticed it was horribly infected with spyware and running like crap. They wanted a memory upgrade, and I knew that there was no way in hell that was going to affect a machine this badly infected. As a GS agent, my primary job was upselling, not fixing computers. Big surprise, huh? And I didn't feel right telling them it was going to be another to fix their machine, as they were already forking out for a memory upgrade, and they were obviously poor as hell. Kids running around half, naked in old faded clothes, mattresses on the floor, ancient color TV, nothing in the apartment for furnishings, and this PC, which was obviously their main source of entertainment. Yeah, I was judging them, but whatever. It was obvious they weren't doing so well. I had no other calls for the day, so I decided to be a good guy and fix up their machine, get it all cleaned up, running like brand spanking new, show them they didn't need a hardware upgrade, and explain to them that I was never there, I wasn't charging them, and to have a nice day, they were super grateful, on the verge of tears and whatnot. And I leave feeling awesome and like a computer, ninja, I think nothing of it. Until two days later, I get called into my manager's office. He sits me down and throws out her name. I'm thinking, oh crap, he's going to fire me for not charging them, I say. Well, yeah, what about her? Manager then tells me that she called in and complained about the service, said I was super rude, and demanded I make the check out to me personally instead of the geek squad. She demanded a refund, saying the job wasn't done right, and she even had the nerve to say that she also thinks I stole her wedding ring. My jaw just drops to the floor, and I sit there stunned for a moment, when the manager looks at me and says, So, care to say anything in defense, I decide that there's no way out of it and spill the entire story. Including the situation to the manager, I pull up my bank statement to prove I haven't had any deposits in the last few days, and he counters that I could have just cashed it. At this point, I'm all, are you kidding me? You really think I'd do something like that? In the end, I managed to convince the manager I didn't steal anything, but I had to deal with an investigation from the police, pay for her services out of my own pocket, and my manager also made me write a formal apology to her, TLDR. Tried to be a good guy, ended up being victim of woman trying to scam the company for a refund for services I did for free. Account 5. There's one who sits on the corner of a crossroads near my university with his dog. I always bring him some dog food from home, so he can spend his money or use his food for himself. He was always so happy when I did it, even more so when I had enough money to bring him a large bottle of water, there was another one outside the Chinese takeaway I used to work in. We'd make him a huge tub of egg fried rice before closing since we had to throw it out anyway. The local Tesco had banned him from going in, so I'd go in for him after he had his rice for anything he needed for the night. Tragic thing is he lost his job just before Christmas of 2010. His wife threw him out Christmas Day, and he can't get into homeless shelters near here because they're all full, so we did what we could. Unfortunately, the takeaway closed, I lost my job, and I haven't seen him around there since. I hope he's okay. Homeless people in need are always the sweetest people you'll meet when you get them anything at all. Beggars who don't need it for survival are always dicks. Account 6. Raked and blew the leaves off a friend's yard because they were starting to blow onto her neighbor's recently cleaned and mowed immaculate yard. Said neighbor came out and screamed at me that she had just gotten her yard worked on, and I had better not mess it up. I explained that I was doing a good deed for a friend that was mostly a benefit to her, the neighbor. But all I got was, I don't give a damn. 
for a reply. Two years later, said neighbor's husband gets cancer and loses his income, and they fall into financial trouble and have to lay off their lawn service, and their lawn goes to crap. I took the opportunity to again do the right thing and started to maintain their yard and continue to this day for free. The gratitude on this lady's face when I see her is priceless. We never bring up what she did to me, but I know she remembers. I can still hear my late mother saying, Kill them with kindness, Chris. Kill them with kindness. Account 7. I was waiting in line to do a return at a department store. A little boy, probably about three or four years old, stood a bit away from the registers crying and calling for his mommy. I looked around trying to spot mommy, but didn't see any adults paying attention to him. After about five minutes of this, I went and asked him, Hey, honey, are you okay? Let's see if the checkout lady can call your mom. I gestured for him to follow me. Didn't touch the kid. The cashier paged the mom, who came almost immediately and was thankful. After the mom left with the boy, the cashier and the two customers in front of me in line chatted about how worried they were that I might have been kidnapping him. I was standing right behind them, edit. Also, I don't think I looked that sketchy, 20 years old at the time, female wearing a college t-shirt and jeans. Account 8. Interesting thing about some Chinese people I recently noticed, twice in the past couple of weeks, here in China. I've been walking past someone on the street when they've dropped something on the ground. One girl dropped her phone, another guy dropped his lighter. Each time I bent down to pick it up for them, they freaked the fuck out. Thinking I'm taking their shit, the guy starting yelling, mine, mine, in Chinese, of course, while the girl violently grabbed the phone out of my hand. I guess Chinese people just don't help other people pick up their shit. Account 9. I used to work for a hotel, and there was no end to the shit people would outright fabricate and post onto sites like Travelocity. One family was pissed off that the province I lived in has a higher tax rate than most, so they demanded their two or three dollars or whatever difference it was be given back to them. I did not do this on a matter of principle, because they were treating me like shit and insulting the place where I lived. They proceeded to go on Travelocity and make up leagues of untrue things about my property and how horrible it was. I'm surprised they weren't typing in caps lock. It was extreme. Another situation. We used to host kids. Hockey tournaments at our hotel. Several per year would come through. A lot of these hockey families were nice, reasonable people. Most were not. They would give us attitude, saying things like, We single-handedly keep your business open during the winter. You should be grateful and give us what we want. And bullshit like that. Patently untrue, of course. This translated into letting their kids trash the hotel until 3.30 a.m. each night, while the parents got drunk in the public hallways and woke up the other guests, costing us hundreds in refunds. I reiterate that this was only about 50 of the hockey family guests but it was enough. Anyway, the way they would try to get their way was by threatening to write bad reviews of the hotel online. Many of them followed through with their threats. You would not believe how low some people will sink with the shit they will make up, just so they can feel as if they've achieved a victory at the end of the day. And then we would have to put up with normal, Reasonable people calling us and threatening to cancel because of the Travelocity reviews they read that were fabricated by these horrible other people who just wanted to win the stupid little ego battle they chose to have with us. Count 10. My good deed was nothing extreme. But here goes. I was in the cafe of my college, about to get some hot water in my thermos, when I noticed someone standing behind me. Now, since I had previously had hot chocolate in my mug, I needed to rinse it out. I felt like this other person should go before me since she was merely getting hot water. I say, you can go first. I need to rinse my mug out, she looks at me incredulously. What did you say, me? Uh, you can go first. I have to rinse my mug out, her, in an exceedingly pissy manner. Oh, that's not what I thought you said. You should be careful what you say. What in the fuck? I also found out later that this woman is a department head at the school I attend and batshit crazy. Account 11. I'm a doctor and I recently did a rotation in the MAU dot medical assessment unit one step after AE. The system is a bit fucked up, and whereas in AE there's a four-hour wait rule, 
and the hospital loses money if patients I breach. However, there's no such rule in MAU, so people from ED get shipped there willy-nilly, often without being properly seen. To stop them from breaching, they then wait in MAU for hours and hours, particularly overnight when there are a minimum number of doctors on, to be clerked. Generally, the ones that bitch and whine about waiting are the ones that shouldn't fucking be there, but the ones who don't are usually older and occasionally too sick to say anything. Then they get missed because we were dealing with someone who was fucking whining. Christ, it annoys me. Count 12. In an AE. Waiting room at the hospital, a couple were loudly bitching about the service being slow and constantly harassing any nurse or doctor who went by. I felt like standing up and telling them this is the NHS they are talking about, not some restaurant. You don't go to the hospital for atmosphere and quick turnover. You go there to be fixed up and sent home. If you want a luxury service, then go private. Otherwise, shut up and wait your turn. The look on their face when I got seen by a doctor before them because I had a head injury was priceless. Lots of loud huffing and evil stares were aimed at me. Account 13. I was bartending a private event and found a purse that someone had left on the bar, so I tucked it away behind the register. Towards the end, I heard a lady complaining about it being stolen and how there was a lot of cash and valuables in it. I then returned it. She was lying about the cash. She tried to write me a check for a reward, which I declined, asking only that she someday pay the good deed forward. The next day, she went on Yelp and wrote this huge review claiming that the bartender attempted to steal her purse and the only reason she got it back was because of how vocal she was about it and that I got scared.